Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Williams, and as always, I greet you with Jesus' joy. I began talking about the associations or the company you keep, and I want to continue that theme, if you will. Um, I started in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, that says, Bad associations corrupt good character. Uh, to make my point about how important it is, the company you keep. I want to continue that with Daniel chapter 2, verse 17. It reads like this. Uh, then Daniel returned to his house and explained the matter to his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Verse 18 reads, he urged them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men in Babylon. And then verse 19, during the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. Now, Daniel is, along with his people, uh, taken captive into Babylon. The king had taken them in Babylonian captivity, and he and his nation. And one of the practices of the Babylonians is whenever they would take a nation captive, they would skim off of the top of the nation, the best of the best, the creme de la creme, if you will, the cream of the crop, and then train the best of them to serve in his Babylonian administration. Daniel was one of the ones who fell in that category because he was so impressive that he was trained and was given a position of high authority in the Babylonian uh, administration. One day the king had a dream. And when he had this dream, he asked his wise men to interpret it for him. Actually, he called them together and asked them to tell him what he dreamed and the interpretation thereof. Well, they said, well, King, nobody can do that. No one can tell you what you dream. But if you would tell us, we can interpret it for you. The king became so irate that they couldn't do it, that he decided that all of the wise men would be executed. So he sent out a decree and the, the chief of the guards uh, was out to carry it out. When David, Daniel heard about it, Daniel confronted the man. Uh, his name was Ariak, and he said, why has the king set out such a terrible and harsh decree? And then he explains the situation to him. And uh, so Daniel went to the king and said, oh, king, uh, give me a chance. Give me some time. If you give me some time, I will find out what you dreamed, and I'll give you the interpretation thereof. After having done that, Daniel goes not simply to prayer, and we know that Daniel was a praying man, because he, the Bible says he prayed, even in Babylonian captivity, three times a day. The Bible says he didn't just go to prayer, but he went to his friends to ask them to pray with him. He went to Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael. We know them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but those names that we know them by are the names given to them by their oppressors. It wasn't their Hebrew name. He went to his friends, these three friends that we know of, in scripture and asked them to join him in praying about this crucial and critical matter. Uh, and the Bible says they did. And when they prayed, one evening, Daniel got the revelation to the mystery of the prayer, of the, of the dream that the king had. And uh, of course, his first response was to praise the God uh, that they served. Now this is important because there's a critical point uh, in Daniel's life. In fact, it's a critical point in the among the population of those who call wise because their, their lives were on the line. But Daniel had somebody he could go to at a time of crisis to pray. And as people of God, if you're a believer, you know the importance of prayer. Prayer is to the spirit what breath is to the body. If you don't breathe, you can't live. And if you don't pray, you're not going to make it. Prayer is critical. It's central to what it means to be a believer. Prayer is uh, our inviting God to the fight, if you will. Prayer is the acknowledgement to God that we can't do this alone. So prayer is our capacity to reach over into another world, if you will, and grasp what we need for the living of these days. Anyway, prayer is important. And Daniel, at a crucial and critical moment, had some prayer partners to go to that could agree with him in prayer. And since we're talking about the importance of this company we keep, might I suggest to you that when you're choosing the company you keep, choose some people 
with the criteria that Daniel used. These people were friends of his, number one, because they were fellow believers. And I think it's, in, it's important for people who have Christ at the center of their lives uh, to find other people who have the same chief joy in times of crises. doesn't mean that other people in your life who are not believers don't have anything valuable to contribute to your life. But if Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to you, at a critical hour, a crucial moment, in the midst of a crisis, it's good to link up with people who share the best thing that ever happened to you, have a critical and central relationship with Christ for themselves. So Daniel went to people who shared his faith. He also went to people who shared his feeling, his, his commitment to prayer. He believed that prayer was valuable, and he went to other praying people because he knew that they weren't just going to engage in religious talk. Oh, yeah, I'll pray for you. You know how we do sometimes. See, I'm praying for you and never whisper a prayer. Daniel went to some people he knew not only valued prayer but would pray. And uh, if you're going to have some friends around you, have some people who know God and can get a prayer through. Uh, because there'll be times in a crisis when it's going to be hard for you to pray, but it's good to have some people join you in prayer if you believe in the power of prayer, and I do. And he went to people who were fellow sufferers with him, people who were part of the oppressed, people who could identify with what it meant to be in a crisis. And sometimes what adds fuel to the flame that fuels your passion for prayer is that you share a similar experience. That when you're going through something, it's good to ask people to pray for you who know what it's like to go through what you're going through or may even be going through the same thing. Ain't nothing like touching and agreeing with someone who's going to pray with the same fire because they are familiar with the same thing. If the company you keep is important, then let me suggest to you, let me advise you, if you will, that given the fact that there is power in prayer, make sure that you have some people you can go to when you want to join in with prayer. It happens all over the Bible. Jesus even had prayer partners, Peter, James, and John. Esther, when she was faced with a, with a, with a crisis in the nation, she went and asked people to pray fast and pray with her. Jesus said some things only come through prayer and fasting. So it's good to be a person who knows the value of prayer yourself. But can I encourage you to get you some prayer warriors, some fellow laborers in prayer with you? Uh, because sometimes what helps you get through a situation is not simply that you pray through, but that you pray through with people who join with you in prayer and agree with you in prayer. And if there's ever time we need to pray and pray together, it's during this COVID virus and during this virus of racism and white supremacy and during this virus of uh, uh, the malady we're suffering from poor leadership in our country. It's time to pray. Um, may, we'll do more than pray, but there is power in prayer. The Bible says that because Daniel went to his praying friends and they agreed in prayer, that the prayer was answered in the sense that Daniel was praying for insight into mystery of the king's uh, dream and the Lord revealed it to him. And listen, there's power in prayer and there's power in getting associations, friends, to pray with you. Imagine the joy that must have come to the hearts of the prayer partners and Daniel when Daniel came to them and told them, our prayers have been answered. And what do you do when your prayers answered? Well, do like Daniel did, does. Before you act on anything else, take some time to have a praise break and do like Daniel did. Praise the God of heaven. If it is true that your life is influenced in significant ways by the company you keep, make sure that one of the criteria of the company that you're keeping is that they know how to get a prayer through. God bless you. I'll talk to you next time.